Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Stephen Hartford. I am the Director of Administration for the State of Rhode Island. And uh, in that role, I also have the honor and privilege uh, of serving as the Chairman of the State Planning Council. And I will be um, running the meeting this morning. I just have a couple of uh, introductory announcements. First of all, I'd like to call the meeting uh, to order of the State Planning Council, 9.06 a.m. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us this morning for the December meeting of the State Planning Council. The primary purpose of today's meeting is for members of the council to discuss and vote on the draft economic plan for the state. This meeting is not scheduled as a public hearing on the plan. Two public hearings have already been held on this plan at the end of October, and the council has had several weeks to review the content of the public hearing report. The council members have also had ample time to consider the various views shared by members of the public in articles, op-eds, and letters published in newspapers, blogs, and other media throughout the state over the past month. However, as a routine part of our agenda, there is an opportunity for public comment. We will set aside about one hour today for public comment before the council has a discussion and holds a vote. And I want to repeat, the purpose of this meeting is to give the members of the council an opportunity to deliberate and discuss the plan. That is the primary purpose of the meeting. So I appreciate your uh, courtesy and your forbearance to allow the members of the council to discuss the plan at some point. So we're going to start uh, with public comment and uh, we're going to uh, plan to limit that to one hour. Um, each speaker will have no more than two minutes to address the members of the council. Please use your time. Uh, as, as wisely as you can and summarize your comments and your points. <coughs> I'm going to call two names before each speaker. The name of the current speaker and the name of the next speaker. For the sake of efficiency, I ask that the next speaker come stand near the podium so that you are ready once the speaker ahead of you is finished. I will call the names for the next hour. If someone is not in the room and his or her name is called, we will move on to the next person. Uh, if the missing person was primarily in opposition, the next person from the opposition list will be called. At the end of the hour, I will open up discussion among the council members. So that as many points of view as possible are heard, I request that if anyone who has spoken ahead of you has already covered the same points you intended to make, please consider exercising your option to pass to the next person on the list. Anyone is, of course, able to pass when their name is called for whatever reason. Uh, please note that the fire marshals have alerted us that we are at maximum capacity for this room. If you need to leave the room for any reason during the meeting, you must bring your meeting pass uh, with you, otherwise you may be prohibited from re-entering. We have to keep track of who's coming and leaving the room for fire uh, capacity purposes. Please take note of the main entrance that you arrived through. Um, the bathrooms are to the right when you exit out that main exit. I ask that you take care of any personal business, including any cell phone calls outside of the room so as not to disrupt others. In case of emergency, there are three additional exits to this room. Finally, and most importantly, I would ask that everyone be civil and respectful of all the opinions expressed today, whether or not they are similar to your own. We are in, active, we are in an active office environment in this building where work is happening around us, and I thank you in advance for acting accordingly. <coughs> Governor Chafee is here with us today, and we're happy to have him kick off the public comment time. Afterwards, I will call the first and second speakers from the public. Thank you very much, all, for your cooperation, and thank you, Governor Chafee, for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you. I am going to try to adhere to that two minutes. Uh, that everybody else, you've asked everybody else to adhere to. First of all, when I took office, the unemployment rate was 11.4%. Four years later, we're down to 7.4%, and that is 
the seventh best drop in the country over the four years. And some other facts from the federal unemployment numbers. We have our unemployment numbers have fallen for 15 consecutive months and it's at its lowest level since April of 2008. The number of unemployed is down 10,300 since the start of the year. These are the federal uh, numbers that they release every month. This is the best start on record. And the number of employed in Rhode Island is up 15,600 <coughs> since the beginning of the year. And that is the best start since 1984. So we've got some momentum going with our economy. And I think it's very, very important that we do some research on what's happening with our employment and in our economy in Rhode Island. And that's what we've done with this roadmap. So it's great to see people out here that care about our economy in Rhode Island. I welcome your questions. Please ask your questions to the State Planning Council. And we are very welcome to have you here commenting on what is important, getting the momentum of the state going in our economy. So I look forward to your questions. Please keep them for the two minutes. And this is a good document. We're on the right road of recovery. And it's all because of inclusion. <laughs> Governor, and uh, thank you all. The first name I will call is Neil Steinberg, and also Roy Dempsey. If you could come forward to the podium, Neil, you'll be first. Mr. Dempsey, if you could come forward. Mr. Steinberg. Thank you, members of the council, Governor Chafee. I'm Neil Steinberg, President and CEO of the Rhode Island Foundation, and we urge the State Planning Council to approve the Roadmap Economic Development Plan. Two years ago, we convened 300 business leaders for Make It Happen Rhode Island with the goal of kickstarting economic activity in the state. Leading up to that event, and in the two years since, we've heard over and over from Rhode Islanders throughout the state about the lack of an economic development plan. Roadmap provided an opportunity and resources for a planning effort. In order to ensure private sector input into the planning process, the foundation partnered with Commerce Rhode Island to facilitate an unprecedented series of convenings with over 200 participants from the private sector in the fall of 2013. The plan you are voting on today includes many of the outcomes of those sessions. Statewide planning was extremely open during this whole process to input and feedback throughout the planning process. Through an open process for over a year, individuals and groups have had the opportunity to participate in the planning, communicate positions, and information and help shape the plan. I personally attended a few of the public meetings. The plan does not suggest any single silver bullet. It highlights strengths and growth opportunities at the intersection of emerging and established industries like design and manufacturing, tourism, food, health sciences, and cybersecurity. The plan reflects the interconnectedness of economic development, workforce development, and education. It acknowledges the complex connections between the economy and environmental resilience. We consider the strength that this economic development plan embraces opportunity for all Rhode Islanders and recognizes the diversity of the state now and into the future. We must proactively ensure that all Rhode Islanders have opportunity to good education and good jobs in order to ensure our state's future. We consider the strength that the plan is built upon smart growth principles. We're small, we have limited resources, and quality of place is extremely important and therefore we must be deliberate how we grow. We do not believe this plan in any way cedes Rhode Island sovereignty to the federal government. The extent to which is implemented will be decided by the governor, the General Assembly, municipal governments, and private business and organizations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, thank you and good morning. Uh, just a question to you. Do you think that there are any racists out there do you think that any of these people from our state are racist? No, I don't. I think there are a number of concerned people out there. I think when this final product was put out to the press and it was termed that it was not just based on economics, a lot of heads went up and a lot of thinking was done. Now, I was talking to a gentleman out in out the foyer prior to coming in here, and he's for the plan. And he says, I've been involved for the last year and a half. And you really? I said, why is there just now discussions regarding this plan when we've sent out numerous emails, numerous press, numerous press uh, uh, white people to, uh, to comment? And I said, well, I wasn't 
really interested in coming to an economic plan. I thought it would be based on economics. I thought it would be talked about spending, you know, state spending, taxes, incentives, and stuff like that. I never expected that social engineering was going to be part of this plan. It was interesting, it was interesting when I looked at Mr. Mr. Wolf and Mr. Stenhouse were on uh, Dan York's program. And one thing came up. It was what what basis or what foundation? Well, let me ask this. Does anyone here have an economics degree? Does anyone here have a basis for commenting on this particular plan? Because really, I was stunned when Mr. Stenhouse says, no, well, I have a degree in economics, and I believe he said from Harvard. How many people on here have a degree in economics? And how many people here have an ability, for one, one out of what, 25? How many people here have the ability to comment, or should be commenting, on an economics plan for the state? Why should we be getting into a situation now where we need focus? We need focus on economic priorities. We don't need animosity. We don't need this people showing up here and having to think they have to protect their interests going forward. We need all to unite in how we're going to move this state forward. And this plan doesn't do that. Thank you. Thank you. Dan Torado, Mr. Torado, if you could come forward. <coughs> Mr. Payne. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to make three points. First, this plan is necessary, not discretionary, necessary under two chapters of the general laws. They are specifically 4264.17 and 421110. It's a necessary document. Number two, it's a beneficial document. It helps Rhode Island. The key thing in economic development in the 21st century is workforce productivity. If you don't advance workforce productivity, you're going to sink. And this plan clearly identifies those populations and those components of the state where it's necessary to provide education and job access in order to increase work program, force productivity in the state. Number three, this plan is low risk. It's not binding on any, much of anything. It has only four functions, and none of them could resolve in the kind of calamity some people fear. None of them fear. And those are legal restrictions on the use of this plan. So if it's, it's required by law, it's beneficial to Rhode Island, and it's low, low risk, there is every reason to vote affirmatively for it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Payne. Mr. Mr. Chirata. Mr. Good morning. Good morning. I'll uh, start with my overarching point. Uh, social equity is a deception. Uh, let me repeat that. Social equity is a big, steaming lie. Social justice, social equality, now social equity. Uh, some people keep coming up with the uh, same agendas over and over again. And when rejected by the people, or when proven to be abject failures, you change the label and you try again. Uh, let's not forget that Obamacare was shoved down our throats for the same reasons. Just to find out recently that it was instituted by liars just to swindle us of our money and our freedom. Now, a recent example of when social equity landed on its face is found in the book Show Me a Hero by Lisa Belkin. HBO, as we speak, is filming a miniseries about this book. It documents a disastrous period from 1988 to 1998 when a judge ordered low-income housing to be built in the prominent and wealthier parts of Yonkers, New York. This ruling ended up being crippling to the entire municipal government, hacking the city to shreds. This crisis constituted political suicide for the mayor of Yonkers. And uh, in the subsequent election, um, Democrat primary, forgive me, uh, a month after he lost, he, uh, he shot himself, unfortunately. 
Homeowners spent their entire lives paying for their homes uh, just to apply for their retirement. But now, their homes are virtually home uh, excuse me, worthless because an encroaching government put crack houses in their neighborhoods for all intents and purposes. People will not understand the value of money and will demand more and more when you give it to them for free. Amen. Don't get a handout. Poor people need work and opportunity. Work allows people to understand that their personal value by, by measuring themselves against others. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. May we find you? May we you? <laughs> and, uh, Ian Bowles. Ian Bowles was the mother. Maybe. Hi, thank you, Council and Governor. Uh, my name is Maeve Donahue, and I'm here today speaking as a citizen and a small business owner. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone here in the audience, too, for coming out, all those who are for and against the plan. I'm extremely proud to be part of the extensive process that has led up to this point. The process started over two years ago, creating new opportunities for business owners, large and small, like me, to have a voice in shaping the future of Rhode Island. I'm here today to speak for the process that so many of us have, have dedicated so many hours to be part of. As a small business owner, these are hours that I'm not getting paid for. I'm here because I believe that everyone in this room, everyone in this state, has the ability to collaborate, no matter how confrontational it may seem at the moment. I believe that because at the beginning of this process and throughout this process, a lot of us that are now on the fore side were on opposite sides of the table and we completely disagreed. However, those of us who were not interested in mere grandstanding and those of us who stuck through the process, came together in smaller groups and sat at tables together, we realized that although much of our vocabulary was different, our goals were aligned. We took the time to treat each other and each other's ideas and ideals with respect. And we spent hours and days and now years crafting those discussions, disagreements, and collaborative solutions into this plan. This plan is not some big conspiracy. It is the creative input of hundreds of individual Rhode Islanders like you and me. Rather than a plan, it is more like a guidebook for anyone interested in becoming part of the process. It is truly a roadmap for you to see where you can participate and where you see missing pieces that you can add to the map. So, thank you for letting me be part of this process and for allowing me to comment today. Thank you. Uh, good morning and uh, thank you. Um, Ian Bowles, I'm a uh, first generation uh, immigrant to this country and um, it was interesting, just standing outside, I, I happened to overhear a couple of people saying that um, you know, this, the opportunity to hear people speak on both sides uh, was quite an honor and, and only something that could probably happen in this great democracy of ours. Um, that got me thinking that perhaps Rhode Island might take away some of that freedom, but uh, maybe you could judge that yourselves. Um, also, uh, I feel I'm up here as a bit of a token gesture, uh, regardless of all your uh, own personal uh, thoughts on this, I can't help thinking that uh, you may not have the courage to make the right decisions. Um, I did move to this great country in 1997, and once I got here, I very quickly uh, realized that I was not going back. I burnt my ship. Oh. Now, <laughs> now, I am so proud to call myself an American, so honored that this country lets me call it home, and so privileged to be living the American dream. Please. Do not go down this path. Please do not ruin that dream. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, John Chambers, please come forward and Mike Senhouse. Mr. Chambers. Uh, good morning. So my name is John Chambers. I'm here as a business owner in Rhode Island, I'm also in the Yield Engineers in Providence. And I just wanted to say that I, I feel that uh, I, I like this plan a lot. And the reason is it feels to me like it's investing in what makes Rhode Island really special. And it's our competitive advantage. We have great places from the rural areas, to the coastal, to the, to the urban areas, to the agricultural, I've worked in development, neighborhood development, and all of them. 
I think that great sense of place really helps me in hiring, and, I, and our, my business is hiring. And, and finding people to hire is key to have great places to live. So that, that's one thing to invest in that is great. Secondly, I, I'm an innovative business. I need diversity. And we have a great diverse population here. And to invest in that is also a great thing for businesses in the future that I can get good paying jobs. I think when we invest in what makes us better, what is special about the state and makes us unique is a really wise thing to do. Um, so I, I just commend you all for the work you've done on this and I, and I hope this, you book this through because I think it's going to help me help, uh, get jobs to people and, and help with economic development in the state. So thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Council members, this is your 38 Studios moment. You will not be able to claim you didn't know. Let me tell you the story of Jenny Granado, who owns a 165-year-old historic house in Dayton, Ohio, under a similar regional sustainable development plan. Her house included a wheelchair ramp for her aged grandmother. But the plan called for a bike path across her property. She fought it for years. Nobody would listen. Her front yard was seized by eminent domain. Her wheelchair ramp, her land, trees were demolished. All for the essential project, a bike path, which is now just two feet from her front door. <coughs> You may call this smart growth. We just call it plain dumb and unconstitutional. Woo! This is what you are inviting into Rhode Island when you invite HUD, because HUD is necessary to fund the growth centers that this plan contemplates. Rob Astorino, Westchester County Commissioner, gave me a statement to read to you. Washington bureaucrats who you will never see or meet want the power to determine who will live where and how each neighborhood will look. What's at stake is the fundamental right of our cities, towns, and villages to plan and zone for themselves. HUD thinks it can trample on Westchester County. We must not let HUD trample on Rhode Island. Here are the people. You are the planners. Listen to the people. This is not the plan the General Assembly asked for. Send it back to them. Let them approve it. Not unelected That's right. people like you. That's right. Let our elected officials decide what we for. Thank you very much. Nancy Lopendra and Peter Hewitt. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the Council. Um, I am the president of the Rhode Island chapter of the American Planning Association, and I represent the planning profession of the Ocean State. APA Rhode Island supports the process of comprehensive planning in Rhode Island as the best application for sound planning principles. Roadmap Rhode Island is just one element of the state guide plan, but it is an important one. APA Rhode Island would like to congratulate the professionals at the Rhode Island Division of Planning and the state's consultants for an excellent public outreach and a report that provides needed professional assistance to the state's cities and towns. Through the 18 months dedicated to this project, the division has provided citizens an excellent opportunity to have a meaningful impact on the development of an economic plan. You have demonstrated that the overall responsibility of the planning profession is to serve the public interest, provide opportunity, and pay special attention to the interrelatedness of decisions. APA Rhode Island encourages the State Planning Council adoption of Roadmap Rhode Island as the state's economic development plan. And we look forward to plan implementation by our cities and towns. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lefebvre. Uh, Mr. Hewitt. Good morning. My name is Pete Hewitt. I'm from Bristol. I'm a citizen. I speak here as a citizen. Uh, first point I would like to make is Governor Shaker and Lee are in favor of this plan. I think this is essentially your idea. There are not a lot of people in this consortium who work for Governor Shaker. Uh -huh. And I'm just questioning how objective your vote's going to be, since you right. obviously want to support the man that employs you. That's number one. Number two, um, I was a member of a, of a small working group in Bristol who was put together to develop an economic element 
the Bristol a 10 year comp plan. I would suggest each and every one of you perhaps contact the Bristol authorities, Diane Williamson, who is the Division of Community Development for Bristol, and ask her for a copy of the economic development element of the comp plan that we just produced. I think you'll find there's a major difference when you're talking about economic development, which you'll find in the Bristol plan, versus this roadmap for Island, which is essentially social engineering. It doesn't take a genius, it doesn't take an economics major. It takes a person, a reasoned, prudent person, with reasonable common sense to read this plan. And you honestly look me in the eye and tell me this is an economic development plan. There is very little to do with economic development in this roadmap for Island plan. Now, I'm at a point now where if this plan gets voted through and gets approved, and, and, if, and if it gets implemented without the approval of the General Assembly, which I think is important, that this group, any group of unelected appointed officials who may or may not owe their, their loyalty to the governor or any other bureaucrat who hires them, if it gets voted through without the necessary approval of the General Assembly, then we're in a world of hurt where you folks can dictate the life and the future of residents of the city of the town of State of Rhode Island. If this goes through and gets adopted and gets implemented, and it turns out to be the ramifications of this plan once adopted and once implemented, it turns out to be as adverse to the and such an infringement on the property, private property rights of citizens of Rhode Island and doesn't have the impact on economic development, you think it does, and I think it does not. Then I'm at a point now where I'm retired. I love Rhode Island. I think it's a beautiful state. I know a lot of people are leaving Rhode Island because of this foolishness. Mr. So Lewis, if you could finish your comments. I'll finish it with, if, if it goes through, I'll be leaving myself. Thank you. Thank you. David Westman and Michael Burns. Michael Burns. Mr. Westman. Good morning. Good morning. Equal opportunity isn't new and risky. It's kind of an American tenant. And uh, it's great. It's absolutely true that poor people need work and they need opportunity, and so far, we have done a great job of making that available, as far as I can see. I grew up sailing Narragansett Bay, and a couple of things you learn about sailing is if you don't change your course, you don't change your destination. And when you're sailing at the back of the pack, you can continue to follow everybody and come in dead last, or you can change your course and go off in a slightly different direction. Is that a little scary? Yeah, maybe it is. But this has been a very thorough and inclusive process. I followed this entire process. There's been lots of great dialogue. Look at the dialogue. We're here. We're all having a chance to weigh in on this. There's been ample debates on the merit of the plan. The plan has reasonable and rational measures proposed. It has good metrics to evaluate whether we're making progress, whether we're moving up in the pack or moving back in the pack. It's not social engineering, you know it. It's not risky. There's nothing to do people make their comments. It doesn't trample on anyone's rights. It's a plan. Wouldn't you love to see a plan have the kind of effects these people have predicted? Wow, wouldn't that be something? It's a vital prescription for a critically or seriously ill patient. As the governor has pointed out, we've got great boat speed. We're starting to accelerate, but we're still in the back of the pack. We need to change course. We need to adopt this plan. We need to move forward with new economic development opportunities for Rhode Island. Thank you for the opportunity to support the Rhode Island. Thank you. If you pick a bad destination, no matter how well you sail, you're in trouble. The process for this plan has not been transparent and is totally lacking in a broad exposure that it deserves. I went to several of the meetings and found the discussions to be preordained. Supporting questionnaires like the one on housing was so narrow that you couldn't ask a good, diverse group of questions about it. It was preordained. Only a thousand people were involved in this process. Anybody know what percentage that is of the state of Rhode Island? One tenth of one percent or right. less? Wow. That's right. And I suspect that many of those 1,000 were double counted. Yeah. If I went to two different group uh, meetings, I was counted as two people. I wonder if staff were counted, because usually 
staff at those meetings outnumbered the participants. <laughs> Until seven weeks ago, most local and state politicians knew nothing about this plan. <coughs> this was an attempt to ramp, this is an attempt to ramp this plan through by this consortium. Lacking in economic expertise, lacking in private sector expertise, but rich in status and planners. I spent 20 years in China. I've been to plans. This is a plan that would fit very well in that environment. In fact, now the Chinese would throw it out. <laughs> this plan is to be jargon free, but terms like social equity, undeserved populations, dominant paradigm, power and privilege, diversity, minority, minorities, authentic indigenous voices, fair housing, and access all seem to have coded meanings. At a minimum, the consortium owes the people of Rhode Island the court courtesy of an explanation of these terms and how they fit in economic development. Right. Right. Could this be that the explanation might not fit with the priorities of the people of this state? Probably so. Probably not. Many of the social equity issues would seem to be amenable through assistance by family, which this plan doesn't mention, and economic development without strong family ties is not possible. Sorry, not possible. Doesn't mention it. Mr. Doesn't mention neighborhood churches or private social organizations. Mr. This is not economic development. Yes, Stephen? If you could conclude your comments. If you could conclude your comments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Rupert Friday and Representative Thompson. Good morning, Chairman, members of the Planning Council. I'm Rupert Friday, I'm director for the Rhode Island Land Trust Council, which is a coalition of the land trusts around the state. And I attended both the hearings and I testified on the plan. And what I want to tell you is that I found the summary of the testimony, the, the public hearing report, succinctly captured the points made during the hearing. And that's not easy to do. And the other thing that I, the other point I'd like to make is that the revisions of the draft plan really reflected the testimony that we made, many people made in the plan. It really captured that in the amendments the draft, to the draft plan. So I want to commend the staff of the statewide planning for the work they did on this plan. I think they did an outstanding job in the, in the hearings and capturing people's points and reflecting them in the draft plan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Friday. Uh, Representative Council. Uh, first of all, thank you all for having this meeting today. And no matter what side of the aisle you're on, this is democracy at its best. And thank you all for coming today. All I would like to say to the panel is I am an elected official. I should have the choice on that House floor as an elected official for this bill to pass and vote yay or nay. I was one of four that opposed this legislation from the beginning. And I'm going to tell you why. I represent North Kingstown, and I represent Exeter. I worked really hard to get elected. And this is the first email that I got this morning at 4.30 a.m. when I was getting ready to work. Dear Mrs. Costa, please do not vote for Roadmap Rhode Island. You represent us, you represent myself, my family, and we are horrified and opposed by its implications. This should go through the General Assembly, there should be hearings, and this is the right thing to do. Please do not pass Roadmap Rhode Island. The, the citizens of the state are now getting wind, and we need more questions. We need more answers. We need an open policy. Please have this go through the General Assembly. This is what I think, you, sir. This is what I got elected to do. I got elected to represent my people in Exeter and North Kingstown. So all I'm asking is I'm not asking to stop this. I'm just asking for a chance to go through the General Assembly, have public hearings, go through the right committee, and let's just do this the right way. Thank you, America. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Blue Map Rhode Island. What a morning. Yes, 
dear council members, as members of the Social Equity Advisory Committee, SEAC, we write to you today in support of the Roadmap Rhode Island Economic Development Plan. The SEAC is comprised of local community members who step forward to work for the statewide planning program to help identify social equity gaps and propose recommendations to the Economic Development Plan to address these gaps as required by the General Assembly in the Long-Term Economic Development Act of 2013. We also support and encourage the state of Rhode Island to ensure the quality and inclusion and incorporate and inclusion are incorporated into the state planning process in the future. Recently there have been very ugly and completely untrue comments made by some who say that Rhode Island is a government plan to take over communities, homes, and private land. Also, CF itself has been directly attacked, accused and vilified for supporting the planning concept that focuses on inclusion and equality. We strongly support Rhode Island, the principle of equity and inclusion of low-income residents and residents of color in the planning process. We encourage the council to adopt the economic development plan and to incorporate the comments submitted by the CIA under separate cover. <laughs> Do not be swayed by those who think that Rhode Island is a them or us. Situation, between individual lives and fair opportunities against British growth and suburban living. The reality is that economic development is about the growth of business. However, it is also about the land use and transportation. It is about the quality of affordable housing for all. It is about the wealthy. It is about the middle class and the poor. It is about the quality of jobs, steady employment, and equity for all of Rhode Island. Rhode Island is not taking from one to give another. <laughs> it's about the development of economic plans and strategies that consider all segments and all people of the state of Rhode Island in a free and equitable way. We guide Bill McMurray, so to the committee, and I thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for taking time. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Here, I can vote. Thank you. Folks up here, I don't know the volume. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. <laughs> Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to the committee. Um, I am a poster child for Rhode Island. And this is the last 20, 30 years of the poster child being. I went to college, Farrington College. That higher education institution has moved to Massachusetts. And that same year that I graduated, 1979, economics were bad in the state. All right? I went to work for a company called Fram or Light and Bendix that had been here since 1937. We closed the doors on the manufacturing operation, the headquarters in 2001. Okay, since 2001, and this is addressed to the governor, I have not been employed in the state of Rhode Island. I have worked out of state since October 31st, 2001. Now, that being stated, there are 34.2% of us that work out of state. We keep talking about unemployment coming down. No, we've done it going across the borders. I travel 53 miles one way a day. And I only make two thirds of what I used to in 2001. That being stated, this plan is not going to help me. I need to have a Honeywell, an Allied Signal, a company that's coming back to Rhode Island. They look at this plan, they're not going to come. Thank you. 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 Thank I'm an artist and I'm an entrepreneur in Providence. I'm also the founder of kiddoinfo.com, which is a parent resource guide. And my goal is to bring families together with local businesses and local events. And my mission when I started that was to make people uh, accessible to things in Rhode Island for families, because I really believe this is a great place for families. 
I support Roadmap Rhode Island, and I hope that you will too. There are two other areas of the plan that I'm most identified with. Roadmap Rhode Island calls for investment in arts and culture to build on Rhode Island's identity as a cultural destination. Innovation in the arts is a state asset and one that we can use to further our competitive advantage. With one of the greatest design schools in the nation right here in Providence, we have a unique opportunity to promote artistic innovation and provide an environment for artists to remain in Providence and start new businesses. Small businesses are the lifeblood of Rhode Island's community. The plan calls for more support to small business activities, to enhance operations and provide access to capital. As a small business owner myself, I know this to be critical to the providing economic staying power. And once again, I urge you to support Roadmap Rhode Island to get started on building the Rhode Island of the future for all of us. Thank you. Good morning, Governor. Good morning, Director. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Antonio Geruso. I represent the good people of East Village and West Village. Um, I, I didn't really have a lot prepared for today, but I just want to know, like, I, I'm all for economic development. I mean, obviously I am. I was the one who, I was the prime sponsor to overhaul the EDC as it was to what it is today. Obviously there was a lot that was cut, there was a lot taken out, there was a lot that was changed, and but I, I supported it anyway because it was economic development. But the more I look at this, I'm wondering, I know it's been said by people before me, I don't see the economic development in this. You know, just looking at things, at uh, sites that are online, look at all the videos, even if only a small percentage of that is true, it still reeks of socialism. I don't see that being economic development. <laughs> As Representative Costa said before me, you know, I, I echo the same sentiments. I've gotten numbers, tons and tons of emails from constituents. Every one of them against, none for. I've seen that towns, my own, two, the two towns I represent, have uh, town council resolutions that are, that are asking everyone to, to oppose this. I'm not sure how many towns or cities have resolutions to, uh, to support it. But um, I do have a couple things that, are, that, that some red flags about the inspection of the HUD documents. There was a concern about adopting this plan as official guidelines for the state of Rhode Island and it results in a core difference between the HUD's mission and the General Assembly's desire to create an economic development. So the HUD, the HUD uh, this was a HUD grant. It's for sustainable communities, not for economic development. So again, the, devil, the devil's in the details. And I know I'm running out of time, but really, what I'd like to close and really have some real teeth in this is this is so divisive. Obviously, you know, we say that this thing's been through public hearings. Apparently, it fell on a lot of deaf ears. But it's so divisive that I think with the, with the new General Assembly coming in, the new governor, it should go before them so it gets its due process. Kingstown. Thank you for letting all of us be a part of this process. I followed this process and been part of the Roadmap Rhode Island process from the very beginning. I support this plan. Rhode Island needs this plan to be more economically competitive. This plan is a paradigm shift in how we look at economic development in the state. This is the most comprehensive economic plan the state has ever done. I really hope that the governor and the legislature will use this plan as a tool to move Rhode Island forward. I encourage the State Planning Council to adopt this plan today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Board of Governor, uh, members of the uh, panel. Excuse me, I'm a little nervous. This is the first public hearing I've ever been to or ever spoken publicly. I started a small business 15 years ago uh, with two people. I currently, uh, since that time, I've employed over 120. Most of those are in Rhode Island. And currently, I operate in Connecticut, New York and Virginia. And my Virginia taxes, Governor, for employment taxes are six times lower in Virginia than they are in Rhode Island. <laughs> I can tell you that things like that you 
folks and people like you do. 38 Studios, for example, are just killing the small businesses yeah. that I know and work with them back. Thank you for your time. Have a nice day. Thank if, you. I, if I add to Virginia over this, you'll understand why. Children. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Diana Fox. I'm here today to express my support for the Economic Development Plan. I'm excited by the direction our state is headed, and I believe this plan is both representative of this direction and supported by clear data. There are a number of ways that the plan speaks to me as an educator and a parent in a multi ethnic, multi -racial, racial family. Specifically, goal number one to provide educational and training opportunities to activate a 21st century workforce, underscores the state's critical need to strengthen our educational system and training opportunities at all levels. A well-educated populace is a more engaged citizenry and more accomplished workforce. This is why goal number two is equally important in fostering an inclusive economy that targets opportunities to typically unders underserved populations. The playing field is not equal, and this plan identifies multiple avenues for job creation in urban areas and for workplace diversification. Study after study demonstrates that a diverse workforce is a more effective problem-solving one. The other goals I find important, there are other goals I find important as well, but these two in particular stand out to me and make me feel proud to be a citizen of Rhode Island in a state that stresses social equity and social justice, which yes, have been long-standing objectives of this country. I urge you to support the plan. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Governor. Um, I think we do need an economic plan. I, I commend you for attempting to create something of econo economic development. But I've been studying this plan for five and six months now. I don't see, like they say, I don't see an economic development plan. I've gotten, I, I represent District 34, five towns, Hopkinton, Richmond, Exeter, West Greenwich, and Charlestown. We as a community, I have received, I'm not even, the, I'm not even, I'm a senator elect. I have received uh, over 100 phone calls on this, asking me to do something about this. We are elected officials. I'm not in there yet, but we will be sworn in on the sticks. And my take on this is we definitely need a plan. We need to study the plan. We can't push forward on this plan because it does seem like another 38 studios to me. Um, it just seems like we'll pass it and then decide and read it. Um, we're, um, we're confused. We're just getting wind of this. It seems like everything has been under the radar. Our citizens have not been aware of this. We need to speak out, we need to study this. And Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and that's all I need to say. Thank you. Bridget Ryan, and Scott Goldberg, please. Ms. Ryan. Hi, my name is Bridget Ryan. I'm a resident of Newport. I support Roadmap Rhode Island because I think we need to better match our skills developments and job training with good, jobs that are pathways to family supporting wages here in Rhode Island. I was not invited to participate in, in this plan, um, but I became aware of it and showed up and I started participating. Um, and I was very glad to see that the door was open to me. So I in no way ever felt like I was excluded from the process. As soon as I you know, showed my interest, I was included uh, in the process and I thank you for that. Um, I would also like to say, based on years of experience working here in Rhode Island, when we invite HUD to this state, we invite a partner that invests in infrastructure, in community, in people, in the environment, and we invite a partner that helps us to ensure fairness for all of our residents, for every single resident in this state, and for fairness and participating in the planning process. And so I thank you today for listening to my comments, and I thank you for allowing my participation in this planning.
talk to the first uh, town moderator at Hopkins and a former councilman. I rise to oppose this. I tend to, I've, I've been accused in the past of uh, being an anti-development candidate and I've been ostracized in political campaigns with Jacqueline, et cetera. But I oppose this plan because I'm gonna tell you, I served from 2010 to uh, 2014 on the Hopkins and Town Council. I have never even heard of this plan. I still have to acquaint myself with it. For what I know, I'm not impressed. I find it ironic that somebody standing before you today is as a person who's been elected official, knew nothing about this plan, a town planner never brought it to the council's attention, and I find that very ironic. And you're talking about input. Now, if a town council member does not know about this, or it's not a red flag by our town planner, that doesn't say much about this, this proposal. And I'll say that under oath in Superior Court under the penalties of perjury, because I'll tell you right now, I do not recall our town plan ever came to our attention. The Hopkins Town Council, I want to commend, had a special meeting Monday night to uh, oppose this, and I'd like to commend them for doing that. Uh, the bottom line is, the foundation of this state is not only its people, but its 39 cities and towns. All different, all Rhode Islanders, the demographics are different, the tax bases are different, and I really respectfully beg you to uh, go back to the drawing board, come back, and you have a partnership with the people of this state and the cities and towns and the local officials, because uh, mm -hmm. it really needs to be done. And also, real serious decisions have to be let, made by elected officials. They are the ones that have to face the voters and deal with the reality. And I beg you to reject this plan at this time. Thank you. And Robert Nancy, please. Hi, my name is Stephen Larrick. I'm Director of Planning and Economic Development uh, for the City of Central Falls, um, also a resident of the City of Providence. Um, I've been uh, uh, at other public meetings before to testify uh, in support of Roadmap Rhode Island, uh, and specifically in support of the Economic Development Plan. Uh, and I won't repeat the testimony I've already provided, um, or repeat the letter that I've submitted already on behalf of Mayor Diosa and the Diosa administration, but I will remind you as an elected official. Um, what I do think I can add to the conversation um, is something that I think has been a, a bit lacking so far, which is a discussion of, of HUD uh, and HUD programs, as in my capacity I work uh, in HUD programs on a daily basis. Um, there's, I think that those who are in opposition um, to just the mere me mention of, the, uh, of HUD as an agency are maybe not super familiar with the role that HUD plays uh, in the day-to-day -day activities of cities and towns in Rhode Island. Um, HUD programs provide funding uh, for important projects uh, that, we, that we work on in the city of Central Falls on a day-to-day -day basis. These projects include infrastructure projects. Um, these, these projects include projects for parks. Uh, they help us address the foreclosure crisis in our community. Uh, and importantly, all of these projects save taxpayer dollars. Please, drowning, uh, listen, drowning out uh, uh, discourse through noise may be your political strategy, but it's not really helpful right now. Thank you. Um, <laughs> These are needed projects that our city is going to need to complete, whether we have HUD funding or not. Uh, if we don't have HUD funding, we're going to need more taxpayer dollars to do them. Not only that, but the, the monies that we get through partnership through HUD also help fund our local planning activities. This is an important point because one of the main uh, uh, contentions of the opposition has been uh, that HUD intends to usurp local control. I will contend that without HUD support, it would be nearly impossible for us to have the administrative staff required to run a local planning board, to run a local zoning board, and to complete a local comprehensive plan. These documents guide every project we do with HUD. HUD does not dictate our projects. All of these projects must come from the local level. And HUD actually allows for the staffing that allows us to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Robert Lancia. I'm a former Navy chaplain, disabled vet, and I'm also the new uh, representative elect from District 16 in Cranston. And um, as a new representative elect, I look to my leadership for guidance and help as I go forward. And I received this uh, email from the Speaker of the House uh, just last night. And this is what it says. And because of what it says, it causes me concern. He writes, dear representatives and representatives elect, I know that many of you are receiving calls and questions from your constituents about Roadmap RI, which is scheduled to be voted on tomorrow morning. Therefore, he issues this statement. I am concerned that Roadmap RI is controversial and is diverting attention away from the goal of improving our state's economy. He goes on to write, I prefer to focus my attention on working closely with the governor-elect and her new Commerce Department Secretary, the Economic Development Planning Council when it is appointed, and the state Senate President to make sure that Rhode Island develops a stronger, better, and more vibrant economy that creates new jobs. In 2013, legislation that I sponsored mandated the development of a four-year plan similar to the ones that have been successfully adopted in Massachusetts and Connecticut. A separate effort had been begun in 2011 with a grant for $1.9 million from HUD that became Roadmap. Road, uh, Roadmap. While the Assembly's uh, legislation focuses on economic development strategy, Roadmap RI goes far beyond that scope. At this time, I will continue to focus my attention and energy more specifically on developing policies, strategies, and legislation that improve our economy and promote jobs. Two years ago, I sat across from our governor, our current governor, on a different issue. And the governor said to me at the time, I don't even know if you remember me, sir, but it was in reference to an issue local to Cranston. And when I finished speaking, he said to me, whose side are you on? <laughs> well, guess what? I'm not on any side. I'm on the side that will do the right thing, make the right decisions, and move in the right direction. And as of today, based on everything I've heard, what I've received, phone calls, emails, we need to take time to do the right thing. We're going to finish up our public uh, comment portion in about 10 minutes. Good morning, representatives of the statewide planning council. Thank you for taking the time this morning and over the past several months to review the economic development plan of Roadmap Rhode Island. Um, I both live and work in Providence, and I um, have had the pleasure and privilege to take part in some of the planning around our map. And I approve of the plan. And I just want to thank you for taking the time today to make your considerations and vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hi, my name is Todd Sandahl. I live in North Providence, and I'm here to speak on behalf or to speak from the most powerful part of our government, the elector or the, uh, the voters. Um, I've already spoken on this once before and seen my comments transcribed accurately, so I won't speak to the content of the plan so much as to the uh, ability of the plan to satisfy the law which um, generated the plan in the first place. That was um, Title 42, 64.17-1. Uh, Under that law, the plan was supposed to come up with a unified economic development strategy for the state that integrates business growth with land use and transportation choices. I think you probably get about 50% on that one at best with this plan. Second was an analysis of how the state's infrastructure can best support this unified economic development strategy. I read it, I don't see it. The third was a focus and prioritization that the outcomes of the economic development strategy be suitable for all Rhode Islanders. Well, I think you're hearing from people that just don't agree with that one. Um, next was a reliance on comprehensive economic data and analysis relating to Rhode Island's economic competitiveness, 
business climate, national and regional reputation, and present economic development resources. Well, I got nothing to say on that. It's, <laughs> our reputation speaks for itself in New England, folks. I'm sorry to tell you. You've heard from many others like myself that don't work in this state even though we live here. I'd love to work here, but jobs aren't here. Uh, suggestions for improving and expanding the skills, abilities, and resources of state agencies, municipalities, and community partners to speed implementation of the, plan, of the plan's recommendations. Yeah, I think you probably have that in there, but what's, what's being expedited is just the wrong way to go. And then the, this is the important part. The inclusion of detailed implementation plans, including stated goals, specific performance measures, and indicators. I don't see those at all. There's no numbers. Finally, I'll finish with, on or before October 31st, 2014, the Economic Development Corporation and the Division of Planning shall submit the written long-term economic development vision and policy. You missed the date. Uh, flat out, you, you've surpassed the law already. I call on you to end this process now. Good morning. Uh, make my comments brief. Uh, I actually read the plan. Uh, I just want to take out uh, some of the pieces that may not be as debatable, uh, that we might all be on the, the same page. First of all, I don't think there's much debate about whether or not Rhode Island needs a uh, roadmap for economic development. Um, secondly, I'd, I'd like to go through the, the principles and goals. Um, a lot has been spoken about this morning about the need for clear standards and principles and accountability and decision making. Um, I think we're in agreement on that. Um, uh, uh, it's very important that uh, decisions going forward are based upon uh, sound fundamentals. Uh, another point it makes is uh, streamline regulations and better customer service. Again, I don't think there's a lot of debate about that. I, I think we're all on the same page in terms of uh, eliminating regulations, uh, making Rhode Island better for the customer and better for business overall. Uh, strive for an educated workforce. Uh, if we're to, to move forward with economic development, we need an educated workforce. No, no question about that. Um, create opportunities for all. I think that speaks for itself. We're, we're about creating opportunities for everybody in this room. Uh, the goals. Uh, of the plan, and there were six goals overall. Uh, a better trained and educated workforce, I mentioned that. Um, devote resources where, is, where the greatest need exists. That just makes sense, uh, particularly when we're talking about getting people employed. Um, I think you want to direct the resources uh, to where they're needed. Uh, that's just common sense. Um, Support where we're, what we're good at. Um, I mean, it's great. There's great energy in the room tonight, uh, this afternoon, this morning. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, seems like it's been all night. Uh, <laughs> um, yep. Just lastly, uh, better infrastructure. We all know about that, uh, and making Rhode Island more competitive. These are all things that I think we can all get behind. Thank you. Thank you. Dobre jutro, to we I know you may be familiar with that, but that's good morning, comrades. <laughs> My heroes in history, comrade Lenin, comrade Marx, Comrade Stalin believed in central planning. Central planning is a good way to avoid the riffraff of voters and citizens and taxpayers who are not part of the system. So continue on and remember, do what is right. <laughs> Thank you, members of the council. 
I'm uh, president of the South Kingstown Town Council, and I urge you to adopt this as part of the state guide plan. I sympathize with the opposition that we've heard uh, come up around this plan. I think it speaks to the, to the gulf of distrust that's come between the public and its government, and that gulf is understandable because of issues like 38 studios and the general slavishness of politicians to moneyed interests. Um, it's provided fertile ground for uh, blatant, malicious lies to come up and be uh, gain purchase with the public around this plan. And I think we should all consider that moving forward as we try to make better plans. Uh, that being said, uh, this plan is the opposite of, of that. It involved a lot of public engagement, of which I was a part. And I commend the, the developers of the plan for actually putting together something that represents the input that went into it. Uh, specifically for South Kingstown, I think there are pieces of this economic development plan that will go a long way towards creating jobs locally. Uh, South Kingstown has teamed up with the city of Newport, uh, the Rhode Island Nursing and Landscape Association, to focus on developing a, a certificate for green jobs which I look forward to seeing happen. That's going to create as many as 10,000 jobs in Rhode Island eventually, 3,000 in the next five years. Uh, there's also jobs to be created in the renewable energy field. I also want to applaud the plan for including agriculture as one of our growth sectors. Uh, that is not recognizing the current economic development plan, which is on, uh, on the books. So this is not something new that the state is doing. This, really just updates a plan that is inferior to the current proposed one. And I think you can see that given this current state of the economy. So I, I look forward to the representatives, Costa, Giarusso, uh, Lancia, <clears throat> putting forward some of the ideas that are encapsulated in this plan and seeing what can be done to move it forward. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Sure. Um, when I mentioned this whole thing to my neighbor, who is a refugee from Cuba, she was there during the communist takeover, and her grandparents' property was seized, and they were forced to allow people to live in their homes and take over their land. She's not happy about this, neither am I. Um, I'm sec second generation, uh, no, third generation Italian. My parents worked hard to buy the property that they did, and I was lucky enough to inherit after they passed. My children live with me because they can't afford to pay the rent in the state of Rhode Island. And my husband was a sailor. Who was the person that talked about sailing? He said, if you want to go to Block Island, you set your compass heading at XXX. But if you have one degree off, you'll end up in Portugal. So, I don't think that we, the people, are being represented by you, this group. Thank you. Yeah. It, it's the language that I have heard mentioned here sounds like something out of the Communist Manifesto. Manifest. This feels like a Bolshevik revolution. Because we have towns and communities that have land that will be impacted, property that will be impacted, and if you put large groups of subsidized housing by God, who, by the way, get their money from the taxpayers. <laughs> so, frankly, we are paying for all of this, and our children will continue to pay for it. It feels like we're going to be sodomized for the rest of our lives <laughs> by big government, big brother. And if you take money from these people, you're going to be married to them for the rest of your life. And you're committing our children. want to leave the state of Rhode Island because they want to live better. They don't want to have to live with mom. And Governor Chaffee, the numbers you quoted about unemployment, they don't take into account the people who have been unemployed for so long. They don't show up. I know. Mean, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm drawing on my savings to pay for my, just to live. And my home needs repair. The people who live in government subsidized housing do not contribute to the tax base. And yet their children will be educated in our school systems 
And by the way, the state of Rhode Island is the only one who can come and apply for welfare 24 hours after you get it, you know, you get it. That's right. My comments are that this is unfair. This this plan is going forward without representation by our elected officials. And you need to hear what we're saying because this isn't the end of it. This is the beginning. And put it in at 750,000 tons, incinerator at points at point. We stop the container port from going in, and we will stop this. Thank you. So um, that's it for food, our public comment. Fortunately, thank you all for being respectful of, of varying opinions. Uh, I'm going to give an opportunity to the council members whose meeting it is today to um, deliberate on the plan. So I would ask that the same respect that you gave to the speakers, that you gave to the council members who are uh, here um, serving the state. And I'm going to turn the mic over to uh, our Associate Director, Kevin Flynn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the opportunity to make a few comments uh, before we turn it over to general council member discussion and deliberation. Uh, first of all, my sincere thanks to everyone from the public who took the time to be here today and for all of those who were able to speak. One thing we have in common is that we love Rhode Island, we care passionately about its future, and that respect we are all allies in spite of our differences. I also would like to take a moment to thank the staff of both the State Life Planning Program and Commerce RI, who are very engaged in the development of this plan throughout the entire process, and all the citizens and committees who have taken the time to be part of it as well. The State Planning Council has heard and considered many different perspectives over the course of this planning process, both in person and in writing. We have provided the council with an extensive public hearing report which summarizes all comments received through that process. Time has come for this body to take in all those perspectives as well as their own professional experience and reach a decision about plan adoption. But as we all know, the work does not end here. This plan does not change any laws or create any programs or offices, establish source of funds or budgets. The plan is a guide, a toolkit of options, and a framework for approaching many of the difficult decisions Rhode Island still has before it. That is the role of a state guide plan. Should the body adopt the plan today, the next governor, the next general assembly, and each municipality will need to continue a public dialogue about which strategies to pursue and how to go about pursuing them. That is the role of our public leadership. I do, however, want to take a moment before the council vote to address some of the general concerns raised today and previously over the past several weeks. Specifically, there have been a number of concerns raised that, if true, if true frankly, I would oppose the plan myself. First, there is a concern that this plan diminishes personal property rights. The plan does not do this. The plan has no authority to do this. No planning document could do this. Next, next there is a concern that the adoption of the plan will take away certain local governance authority. Again, this is simply not the case. The plan does not advocate for this, nor would it have any authority to do so. Another related concern is that adoption of this plan will allow the Department of Housing and Urban Development to demand things of the state and municipalities against their will. This is also not true. The plan does not make Rhode Island subject to any rules or regulations it or any other state I'm already subject to. We have a 40 year history receiving funds from the Department of Housing and Urban Development. Hundreds of millions of dollars have been provided to support housing programs, local community development initiatives, infrastructure, parks, and economic development. Not the same. Every city in town has benefited from these programs, and I suspect will continue to do so. There has been much misunderstanding about the role of the Social Equity Advisory Committee and their proposed social equity principles. The members of the SEAC have indeed been hardworking, committed partners in this process. 
along with the members of the overall grant consortium. But the CF itself has no official, has no decision-making authority, and is simply an advisory body. Their principles are not an official policy statement of the plan, the State Planning Council, or the State of Rhode Island, but are included as a means of further communicating CX recommendations for reducing disparities and widening opportunities for all. On a related note, I want to alert the State Planning Council members of two small changes of the plan since November. First, we've added language, and this is in your, in your, on your green sheet. We've added language to the cover of Appendix A, making it very clear that the social equity principles are advisory guidance from the CF and not a mandate, as I just explained. Second, reference to DEM as the operator of the wastewater treatment facility, state revolving loan fund, has been deleted given the program is co-managed by the Rhode Island Clean Water Finance Agency. There has been much discussion about what the plan does not do. I would like to close with some thoughts on what the plan does do. From my perspective, the plan is about increasing choice and opportunity for everyone throughout the state. Not about tearing down what already exists. It's about celebrating and building on Rhode Island's strengths rather than chasing the next big thing. It is about making sure all of our government processes and regulations are clear, consistent, timely, and customer friendly, while protecting the health and well-being of our people and our environment. It is about using data and facts to inform our goals, track our progress, and publicly hold ourselves accountable. It's about creating a place where entrepreneurs feel they have the workforce, business climate, and access to capital in order to grow their businesses. With that, Mr. Chairman, I'll conclude my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Glenn. Um, are there any members of the council at this time that would like to comment on the plan before we act on it? Mr. Wolf. Just to, I'd like to make a couple of comments about the plan, which I think is a, a sound, pragmatic, balanced plan. Uh, I think it's definitely an economic development plan with a lot of uh, very specific recommendations about improving our business climate, uh, about playing to our strengths, which is the opposite, the opposite of 38 Studios. 38 Studios was about throwing a Hail Mary pass and putting all our eggs in a basket with a lot of holes in it. This is, this is about looking at our marine sector, our defense sector, our tourism sector, our arts and food sectors where we have existing strengths, our cyber tech uh, opportunities. It's a very pragmatic and, I think, forward-looking document. Um, and I think overall uh, there's been a lot more, uh, a lot more heat than light shed on this, but I think we've had a good discussion today. And I think that uh, it's time for Rhode Island to go beyond planning to having the General Assembly and the governor and the private sector and local government roll up their sleeves and look at implementing uh, a number of aspects of this plan. But it's up to all those entities. It's not up to us as to what aspects of this will be implemented. Uh, but I want to compliment the staff and uh, a thousand Rhode Islanders who participated in this, and uh, that, by the way, is a lot of people to participate in a planning process. Uh, I think this is the, the largest uh, grassroots effort in support of a comprehensive plan that the state has ever seen, and that didn't happen by accident. Overall, I think that this is a step forward. It's not perfect, but it's a step forward. I think it's time for us to uh, to continue the business of, of moving Rhode Island forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wolf. Uh, I would just like to ask if you would please consider allowing others to make comments without uh, cat calling or, or yelling out because we're trying to be respectful to each other and everyone's viewpoints are valid and welcome here. Are there any other members of the council that would like to speak on the plan or be heard on the plan at this point? Yes. Mr. 
Ms. Boyle. I, I just have a couple questions on um, some of the preparation of the plan. Uh, the, um, the intent was to have a couple of supporting documents, some of the supporting documents that went into the plan. And one of the documents is um, the economy of Rhode Island, the economic data analysis and assessment. I would like if perhaps Mr. Flynn could talk to them about how that was prepared and give me a little bit more information as to uh, what that document entailed. Yes, that was one of the early pieces that went into the plan for information uh, prepared by a consultant uh, uh, for the economy, uh, actually uh, procured through the Commerce Island Corporation. Um, it basically did a baseline analysis of where the economy of the state sits so far right now and what are our general strengths and weaknesses. Uh, that was one of two early documents that was the equity profile of Rhode Island that was prepared by policy. So that original document was, I believe, done by the spring of 2013. Just as a, a point of clarification, I think it would be helpful. There's, there's no dating of the documents in this plan. Um, I think that as a reference document, it would be helpful to know the dates of the, the preparation of these documents. It's really not clear when this, these were prepared and as to whether or not these are current. This is current information and how it's prepared. So it's really well, it's not as current now as it was at the beginning of 2013. But I, I, think it would be, I think it would be helpful. We will make sure I get updates. Mr. Lewis, do you want to make a comment? Yes, I do. Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Reisman. Yes, I do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just to make sure I understand the process here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would like to start by acknowledging, like someone else did during the comment period, um, the opposition. That's not necessarily easy, because what I've heard, um, I do not agree with. But um, it's important that the opposition can say what it thinks. And it's important for us, as we sit here, to know that there is that much opposition, and even to know that there is that much distrust. Yeah. <laughs> And even hatred. And well, that's what you say. We we have seen vicious attacks, and um, that is unfortunate. If, if I may, please, it's important for us to not dismiss that as oh well, that's so and so. It's important for us to try to listen to that and say what's going on here, and not dismiss it, but look at what we have done, if anything, to cause that or what we can do in the future differently uh, so that, in fact, trust can improve between all of us because that's what we need. I just wanted to start with that. Secondly, things have been said about why we as a council can act today instead of deferring to elected officials. I want to make clear that we don't sit here thinking that we have the power of elected officials. We're sitting here because elected officials told us to sit here. Again, please let me talk. There is a law, that has been pointed out, that created this process. We're only a part of that process. We're not at the end of that process. The process has been long. You may have different opinions about how open and inclusive it has been. It's my opinion has been very open and very inclusive. We need to come to a point where we vote on whether this plan should be adopted as part of the state guide plan. Under one of the laws, the process goes on. There's another public hearing, if I'm not mistaken. The General Assembly gets to hear additional comments on this. The new governor is not bound by this plan, but it's going to have another council that can use this plan as a tool to develop a future economic strategy. So to suggest that we are nailing things down uh, for the state without leaving any choice or somehow uh, displacing the General Assembly in decision making is simply 
not accurate. And I want to make sure that I explain that before I vote. Because I'm voting today because that's what the law asked me to do. And lastly, I work for the governor. If any of the accusations that were made so far in the press or here today, if any of them were true, I would have told the governor a long time ago, first of all, that I, because I'm supposed to once in a while share my thoughts with him as an advisor, I would have told him that I didn't think we should support this plan. If he would have told me that nonetheless it's not important what you think you're going to support this plan, I would have resigned. I do not agree with the accusation. I can understand how people have been misled by things that have been said. And I think it's very unfortunate. And I think that the people who have started the, mis the misinformation should be held accountable as well. I just want to say, I just want to say that um, I will vote in support because I believe it's a good plan. Mr. Pinchak. I believe, no, it's not my paycheck. I have zero job security, just so that you know. <laughs> and I'm going to be out of a job in a matter of weeks, so you're wrong on that one. Um, I believe that this plan is doing what we need, which is to finally not only look at economic development as if that's one agency that does that, but then another agency does, does something else. And whether they align, who cares? Whether they work at cross core purposes, who cares? This plan is actually trying to make us to work together. That's what we need. How tired are you of seeing government not functioning as one government? I am tired of it. I'm happy to see an effort to really integrate government and its different functions. I'm happy to see government making an attempt to reach out and, and have people who will be affected by policy be part of the process. That's why I'm going to vote for this plan. Thank you. We the people. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. I just want to ask a question. Yes. Associate Director Flynn. You could outline uh, the outreach efforts, the uh, community outreach efforts that uh, this process underwent. Tremendous. Tremendous. It's a long answer. Uh, I try not to have it be a too long of an answer, but uh, we had uh, workshops around the state early in the planning process. We had, I don't even know how many uh, focus groups. We had a process called Meeting and Advice where individuals uh, such as yourself brought the uh, uh, basic content of the plan to groups that they are affiliated with. Uh, we had uh, social media interaction for the first time in this planning process. Uh, all of this, we've had uh, the governing consortium, which consists of nine cities and towns in the state, uh, several nonprofits, uh, business interests, and others uh, meeting on a regular basis. Uh, we've had an, an economic development subcommittee as part of this as well. Uh, so we've had numerous opportunities for public engagement. Uh, everything that we've done has been posted on our website. Every step of the way, that has been done. Uh, and that's why when folks say that we've engaged a thousand rounders, I think that's a fair estimate uh, because of the extensive and deliberate way we try to reach out to rounders of all walks of life. And that's over an 18. 18 to 18 month period to two year period. Thank you. Are there any other uh, members of the council that would like to comment at this time? Yes, um, Director Coit. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, first, I am the director of the Rhode Island Department of Environmental Management. I am on the state planning council because of statute enacted by the General Assembly that requires that be on this council. And today I will do my best to basically carry out my duty as a member of this council who's taken a look at this plan and many iterations, listened to public input, uh, thoughtfully evaluated it, and now I'm in a position to vote. 
I thought one of the most compelling things I read was the piece in the Providence Journal this morning by Larry Gerard from the Taxpayers, Rhode Island Taxpayers Association, because it pointed out that the level of animosity, uh, misunderstanding, uh, derision even, um, is a problem. Uh, it was, that was the most compelling thing I have read about trying to delay or postpone this, um, because most of what I read previously was not accurate, it was misleading, it was uninformed. Um, I'm not, however, going to vote to postpone this, even though I, I think that you're right. Um, those of you who say this level of um, bad feeling, some of what I heard today, is really it's, it's, it's an impediment. But let me explain to you why. First, this is a plan. It, it was required by the General Assembly that we put together an, a plan and adopt it, you're right, by October. We missed that date by a little, and it was subsequently postponed at the request of the speaker. But it is a plan. Funding it, implementing it, carry it for, carrying it forward will require the enactment of new laws and require appropriations. Those of you who oppose it don't really like the state of things in Rhode Island right now. You're not that very happy with our economic um, strategic uh, direction. So this has been an effort with much, much input to consider thoughtfully why and how, why we haven't done well and how we might do better. From the perspective of DEM, it's the first time that we've seen farming, aquaculture, commercial fishing highlighted as the small businesses and the thousands of jobs on the green industry, fishing, farming, bring to Rhode Island. Those are small businesses. It's the first time we've really seen our state beaches and our natural resources highlighted as the assets that they are and the way that they bring millions of people to Rhode Island each year. We have six million people that visit our state facilities. They aren't going to go to tourism. We don't invest enough in tourism. Uh, so I like a lot of what's in the plan. I like a lot of the goals of the plan. I respect the process where the business community and people have weighed in. We've listened. It reflects that input. It reflects the input um, right up until recently, as we've heard from people. So I think the process is valid. I think the plan has a lot of really important um, and good and thoughtful goals. And I do believe in our uh, elected officials, they will have an opportunity to either uh, rewrite a plan, they will have an opportunity to fund or adjust. Um, Speaker Mattiello's email I thought was very interesting. It, it will be in the court of the General Assembly and the new governor to decide what to carry forward. So I don't think those of us who vote for this plan lack courage. I think we need to disagree with your point of view. Um, it's been very, very, uh, I think important to hear from everyone this morning, and I will vote for this plan because I think it's a good plan. It's just a plan. It doesn't rewrite the Constitution. It laws, but it um, is something that I think will help Rhode Island move in a direction different from the one that you're unhappy with right now. Thank you. Treason! Treason! Are there any other uh, members of the council that want to uh, comment at this time? Any other members of the council? What was that? Yes. Tweeting. I just have one more question. Uh, one of the speakers referenced the fact that we already have an economic development plan in place, and I was just wondering what the adoption process was for that existing plan. Uh, the same adoption process as we are about to undertake today, uh, adopted by the State Planning Council, it was adopted in 2001, uh, 2000, and amended in 2001. It was not in. Um, and so the action today, if the council sees fit, would not only be to approve this plan, but also to rescind the existing plan. Do I make one suggestion? Do I make one simple suggestion? No, sir. We have the voice of the people. We the people, not you. This portion of the meeting is for the council to deliberate and act on the plan. Is there, are there any other members of the council that would like to be heard this morning? Um, all right. Uh, I, for myself, I will, I will say that um, my own personal experience in government and in the private sector is that oftentimes difficult, uh, I should say, important or impactful decisions can be difficult 
and can raise a lot of strong opinions on both sides. That does not mean that the decisions do not need to be made. And I personally feel that our role is to move things forward. There's been a lot of work and a lot of participation in developing this plan. I personally feel our role as uh, council members is to uh, take the next step and move it forward. And I think if we do, it will set a good stage for the next governor and the next uh, session of the General Assembly to take some serious steps to uh, really reposition our strategic economic uh, planning for the future of Rhode Island. And for my part, that's a good thing. So I plan to uh, vote in favor of the plan. So with that, I'll take a motion um, to approve the plan. Mr. Flores, Marzan, do you have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to adopt the State of Rhode Island Draft Roadmap, Rhode Island Economic Development Plan. Let's move into the future. Motion's been made. Is there a second on the motion? Director Lewis seconds the motion to approve the plan. Is there any further discussion from the council at this time? Hearing none, I will call the roll. Uh, please vote aye or yes if you support the motion to approve the plan. No if you don't. Mr. Murray. Aye. Mr. Murray votes aye. Ms. Wells. Aye. Ms. Wells votes aye. Ms. Cola. Aye. Ms. Cola votes aye. Ms. Connor Morales. Aye. Ms. Connor Morales votes aye. Director Lewis. Yes. Director Lewis votes yes. Ms. Boyle. Aye. Ms. Boyle votes aye. Ms. Patine. Yes. Ms. Patine votes yes. Mr. Wolf. Aye. Mr. Wolf votes aye. Mr. Shamoon. Aye. Mr. Shamoon votes aye. Mr. Mullaney. Aye. Mr. Mullaney votes aye. Mr. Flores Marzan. And enthusiastic aye. Mr. Flores Marzan votes aye. Director Coit. Aye. Director Coit votes aye. Mr. Flynn. Aye. Mr. Flynn votes aye. Dr. Fine. Aye. Dr. Fine votes aye. Mr. Uchi. Aye. Mr. Uchi votes aye. Mr. Reitzma. Aye. Mr. Reitzma votes aye. Mr. Willis. Yes. Mr. Willis votes yes. Mr. Riordan? Yes, enthusiastically. Mr. Riordan votes yes, enthusiastically. Mr. Beardsley? Aye. Mr. Beardsley votes aye. Mr. Mitchell? Aye. Mr. Mitchell votes aye. Ms. Raymond? Aye. Ms. Raymond votes aye. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Walker votes yes. Ms. Renone? Aye. Ms. Renone votes aye, and Chair votes yes, and the vote is unanimous. Wow. And the vote is Everyone who should be arrested from these offices for treason against Rhode Island and the U.S. Constitution. Did you participate in the process? Calm down. 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 Calm down.